we've been asking which water filters you wanted us to review, and the response wasn't even close. The Sans water purifier came up again and again, and no surprise, it's been all over social media with ads and influencers hyping it up for months. But despite all the buzz, we couldn't find a single real lab test on it. So we did one and also ran all our usual tests. The Sans performed really well in many areas, but two issues came up that you have to know about before buying as you might consider them deal breakers. So stick around, you'll definitely want to hear this. Hi, I'm Sarah from BOS Water, and in today's video, we're reviewing the most requested water filter on our channel, the Sans Water Purifier, a countertop reverse osmosis system that also provides instant hot water. As always, our review includes professional independent lab testing to evaluate real world contaminant reduction and potential leaching. And we also looked at everything else, taste and odor of the filtered water, overall usability, wastewater output, and more. Now, during testing, we came across two issues that, for us, put the sons behind most of the other countertop ROs we've reviewed and that many of you might actually consider deal breakers. And one of them has to do with our lab results, which I'll get to in just a second. But before we get into that, just a quick note, as always, you can find our full analysis of the sons water purifier, including lab reports, in our Google Sheets. For example, the sheet you're seeing now compares 11 different countertop RO systems, including the newly added Sans. The sheet also includes all our product links and several discount codes. So check it out if you're thinking of buying and want to save a few bucks while supporting our work. I'll drop the link in the video description below. All right, let's talk about our lab testing. So we assembled and primed the Sans water purifier following the manual precisely, and then collected two water samples, one from our unfiltered tap water and one after it had been filtered through the Sans. We sent both samples to a professional lab for analysis and compared the results to see how the levels of the various impurities in our tap water changed before and after filtration. Now, important disclaimer, this kind of before and after lab testing isn't an exact science. Um, it can be subject to errors, inaccuracy, contamination, and so on. And we didn't repeat the testing to confirm our results. Also, we tested just one unit, this one, and everything was done under real life conditions using our own tap water. That means we could only measure the contaminants that were actually present in our water and only at the concentrations they occurred. In other words, Results may vary depending on how and where the product is used. And so think of our lab results as a snapshot, not a final verdict. All right, as you can see, the Sans could remove most undesirable impurities and contaminants completely. Chlorine, all four disinfection byproducts, copper, barium, zinc, lithium, nitrate, and uranium. Boron was reduced by 50%, which is lower than most of the other countertop ROs we've tested. Strontium came in at 97%, so almost perfect. Fluoride showed a minimum reduction of 86%, meaning only trace amounts remained, too little for the lab to quantify, which puts the Sans on par with all the other countertop ROs we've tested. And finally, it achieved a 96% reduction in total dissolved solids, which is the second highest we've measured on any countertop RO to date. So really impressive overall. But, and this is where we get to our first potential deal breaker, the lab also detected 3.22 parts per billion of methylene chloride in our filtered water, while none was found in the unfiltered sample. Now this could indicate that something in the system may be leaching. Now to be clear, 3.22 ppb of methylene chloride is below the strictest health guideline we could find, which is four ppb, and under the EPA's legal limit of five ppb for tap water. So based on those thresholds, it shouldn't pose a health risk. It's also possible that if any leaching is indeed happening, it may decline over time, though we haven't tested for that. So while this isn't a definite red flag, it for sure is something that affected how we ranked the SANS overall. All right, what about NSF certifications for contaminant reduction? Well, there aren't any. No official certifications, which we definitely would have preferred. 
What we do have is some third-party test data, and that includes testing to NSF standard 58 for seven heavy metals, along with a few other testing methods that we're less familiar with. Still, the results look solid and cover things like PFOA, PFOS, chromium-6, nitrate, fluoride, the usual suspects. And lastly, for filtration, the taste and odor of the filtered water were perfect. And in addition to the standard sediment and carbon pre and post filters that you'd expect from a home RO system, the SANS also uses UV light to kill germs. But as always, we can't test the effectiveness of that since we don't sample in a sterile environment, but UV certainly doesn't hurt. Okay, usability. First of all, the SANS water purifier is one of the few countertop systems that actually looks good. <laughs> and it feels sturdy and high quality. And thanks to its slim design, it doesn't take up nearly as much counter space as some of the other systems we've tested. That said, the smaller size could be a downside for larger households as it might just be too small to keep up. As for setup, there's a simple quick start sheet included in the box, but to get the full detailed manual, you need to scan the QR code on that sheet to access it online. Now that said, assembling and priming the system is very straightforward. First, clip in the included drip tray, then wash the feed water tank and carafe with soap and water. Place the carafe on the drip tray, then fill the feed water tank with cold water and place it on the system. Plug in the unit and with the carafe in place, it should begin to filter automatically. Run four filtration cycles of filling the tank and allowing it to dispense into the carafe, discarding the dispensed water each time. Then it's ready for use. Everyday use? Couldn't be easier. You fill the feed water tank, then place the pitcher, glass, not plastic by the way, on the drip tray under the spout. The system automatically senses the pitcher, starts dispensing, and stops when it's full. And every time you remove the pitcher to pour and place it back, the system tops it off with more water. So really convenient. But eventually the feed tank needs to be dumped and refilled, which is indicated by the word fill blinking on the display. Now with many of the countertop rows we tested, you really have to pull up on the feed water tank when removing it, which can be a challenge when you have to lean over the counter at an awkward angle. But on the Sans, the tank is extremely easy to remove and replace without compromising its stability during operation. So all of this is really cool. The only issue we see with the auto dispensing is that you can't just interrupt it without spilling water. But what you can do though, is use a different container like a glass or a cup, because here you'll use the manual dispense button. Just press it once to start and again to stop. Also, make sure to not install the pitcher lid backwards because if you do, the auto dispense won't work. That's what happened to us when we first started testing. We hit the dispense button, expecting it to shut off automatically and ended up with water all over the counter. Definitely a user error. <laughs> but it would be nice if Sans made it impossible to install the lid the wrong way. Now let's talk dispensing speed. We measured one minute and seven seconds for 12 ounces, so one and a half cups of ambient water. Not the slowest we've tested among our countertop reverse osmosis systems, but you'll still need a little patience when dispensing both cold and hot water. Which brings us to a feature we haven't covered yet. The Sans offers instant hot water up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the dispense speed is about the same as the cold water dispense speed, which differs from previous systems we've tested where the hot water usually takes a bit longer to pour. However, unlike with ambient water, you can't dispense it into the glass carafe. It simply won't work, maybe to avoid cracking the glass. So you'll need to use a separate mug or container and stay next to the unit as it fills. Also worth noting, the hottest water we got was actually 195 degrees Fahrenheit, not the advertised 203. That's about the same as the water drop A1, but unlike the A1, the Sans only offers a single hot water temperature. And finally, there's no child safety lock on the hot water. That might not be a big deal for everyone, but for families with young kids, it could be a serious concern. So we're counting that as a second potential deal breaker. Last but not least, we really like the Sans display. The buttons are responsive and there's a built-in TDS monitor, which based on our testing is accurate enough to help you keep track of filtration performance. On top of that, there's a filter life indicator that lets you know when it's time to replace the filters, usually somewhere between 600 to 1200 gallons or every one to two years. And replacing filters is super easy. You just remove the top cover, flip the switch that locks each filter into place and pull it out. Reverse that process to insert a new filter cartridge. Okay, on to our final test, wastewater. Like any home RO system, the Sans produces some wastewater during filtration. 
that water collects in the waste compartment of the feed tank and eventually needs to be discarded. Again, the system will let you know when. So we measured how much purified water and how much wastewater the system produced from a full tank. Our result, a ratio of about one to 0.45. In other words, for every one gallon of clean water, the SANS produced 0.45 gallons of waste, which is actually a pretty solid result for a countertop RO system. All right, before we get to costs, let's talk about user complaints from third-party customers. In general, negative reviews were hard to find, mostly because the only official feedback is on Sans's own website, where everything is extremely positive. No one-star or three-star review, and just one two-star review. But there's Reddit. And that's where we found more critical feedback. The most common complaints were leaking or malfunctioning systems, which we didn't experience. Hot water not being hot enough, and we already covered that. Poor customer service, which we can't really comment on. And odd noises. And yes, the SANS does make some noises, but in our opinion, nothing annoying. Okay, costs. When we last checked, the SANS water purifier was priced around $380 to $400, which Seems a bit above average for a countertop filter of this type. On the plus side, it comes with a three-year limited warranty. As for ongoing costs, we estimate about $250 per year for filter replacements. Now that's higher than what Sans claims, but their estimate seems to be based on using less than two gallons of water per day. Our number is based on around three gallons daily, which we think is more realistic for most households. And that's it. So here's a quick summary of the SANS water purifier. It achieved great results in our lab testing for contaminant reduction, but our unit may have leached methylene chloride into the water at a concentration just below the strictest health guideline. Technically, it shouldn't pose a health risk, but it doesn't exactly inspire confidence either. There are no NSF certifications for contaminant reduction, although SANS does provide third-party test data covering several heavy metals, salts, and a few other contaminants. Our filtered water tasted and smelled absolutely clean. The system uses the standard RO filtration process plus UV disinfection for added germ protection. We really like the design. It's sturdy, high quality, and space-saving, and it actually looks good on the counter. The system is easy to install, use, and maintain with features like auto dispensing, TDS monitoring, and a filter life indicator. Now that said, on-demand filtration is a bit slow. The hot water feature worked well, though the temperature was slightly below the advertised 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, there's no child safety lock. Wastewater production was relatively low with a solid pure to drain ratio. Customer reviews on Sans's own website are glowing, but feedback on Reddit is more mixed. And finally, both the upfront and long-term costs seem reasonable, though slightly above average. Okay, don't forget to check out our Google Sheet for the full analysis of the SANS water purifier and 10 other countertop RO systems. You'll also find our product link for the SANS there and in the video description in case you wanna make a purchase. And as always, drop any questions or filter requests in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe, please. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.